Well, hello, hello, hello. Um, today we are in the van, and the exciting part is that um, my parcels from the states arrived from uh, Lowbrow Customs. So we are going to pick it all up. Um, that's pretty exciting. The container must have arrived um, uh, yesterday or at some point. So um, um, yeah, um, we're gonna get them. The back end of the frame, the tank, and all the other bits. So um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon when I'll get to the uh, lockup uh, where the parcel is, and um, then uh, we'll have a look. Oh, here we are, at um, the location where I'm supposed to pick up the boxes. Um, it's pretty windy out there. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting. Oh, here she is. Let's go. Alright, so um, we have it here. We have the first box, and that's our frame. There's a bit of a rust on it, uh, but it's okay. It's been in a container for two months and uh, the magic box of goodies so uh, it's seen a better days <laughs> hopefully it's not damaged inside um, yeah we'll find out when we get home all right let's journey home we are home the road was treacherous uh, people don't really like to pull over, even if they are incredibly slow. But let's not get into that. Um, I hate going over the hill in the car, but we are back. And I just saw some papers being stuck underneath. I'm making. Is anybody there, or is it just wind? Little poltergeisties. Hello? Anybody out there? No. Just pull the guest. Maybe it's telling me something to buy a property. So what do we have? North Otago. I don't want to move south. Oh, we can have a cow farm. Hmm. Maybe I'll go into farming instead of building motorcycles, eh? Anyhow, we have our frame. Uh, this is lowbrow, as you saw in a previous video. Um, and we have some goodies, so uh, we're just going to have a look. Christmas comes early. All right, let's unbox it. protected all the main parts which is cool uh, we have a little tag west coast shipping United States all the way from United States to New Zealand how about that traveled a long way these motorcycles um, wait. This chopper is not gonna be carbon neutral, is it? <laughs> I am definitely not making it electric, that's for sure. Alright. So, um, we have... What I'm excited about this like building from almost semi scratch from a bare naked frame is that I'll have to make things, things up I'll have to make brackets for the brakes I have to make little bits and bobs a little um, oil tank mount and battery mount and everything so um, yeah that's kind of cool you know take my time build everything proper um, so far as I'm looking, you know, 
I don't I wouldn't say the welding is perfect but it's way better than mine and uh, seems pretty solid so um, I am a happy man um, oh okay here we have tape okay let's have a different look different angle at this um, we have uh, this is the mount for the mounts for the engine are already welded on and I could have a sharper knife oh well that was lucky if it was sharper I would have a finger chop and we would already put the blood on this and uh, I'm not like uh, our friend Sean from Bikes and Beards I don't exactly have a chainsaw to uh, start chopping my boxes with. Also, I don't have that many boxes, big boxes, to uh, validate owning a chainsaw. So, uh, a little craft knife it is. Okay, so what do we got? We have, um, oh, me, I did draw blood. <laughs> uh, we have a little. Um, Excel police for ten, uh, chain tensioners. Let's kill. Okay, and this comes with a welded bits. Okay, so uh, that's our frame. Um, I'll get pliers on this, but that's gonna go there. I don't know, can you see that somehow? I'm so excited! Can you tell I'm so excited to build a hardtail? Holy shit! Everybody in New Zealand I talked to told me Dude, are you nuts? You are in New Zealand, this is not California roads! This is New Zealand roads with potholes and bumps and and crazy shit. You're gonna kill your back. Well, that may be, but I do have to try to build that hardtail, at least one, and then we'll see. Um, we will go through the motions. I'm, uh, I really want to try to go through the proper certification on how to cert my frame and all that. So I'll show you uh, a guy I have, uh, well I didn't find him, um, I have talked to a lovely gentleman from South Island and a bunch of other dudes and they have recommended this guy here in uh, Wairarapa, in the area where I live, he does the certification and uh, from what I've been told, not many people want to do uh, uh, certifications because not many people actually does the for projects and if you they get only paid if um, uh, they complete the project so if they go through all your process uh, from start to finish they invest a lot of time and uh, then you give up then uh, they wasted their time and effort and uh, not, not get paid so um, they are very tricky and very um, there's not very many of them out there who can do it and those ones who are uh, they are most likely very picky on who they take on board and they work with so um, we have only one guy here in Wairarapa so hopefully he will be kind to me and um, uh, well I'll try to record the conversation and uh, so you hear exactly what motions we go through and how it works and uh, what happens really so um, yeah that's my plan I want to go fully legal and go from there so this could be quite cool uh, cool thing to map out we already knew we already have seen how to uh, get this bike legal how to go through all the VTNs and stuff and uh, jumping through do through those hoops so um, if I was keeping the frame intact I wouldn't necessarily have to do certification but um, I didn't want to do the cert because she's legal, but might as well give it a go. 
at least, you know, give it a good go to uh, make it proper. So, um, okay, let's have a look at this box, what do we have there? Oh, adding to my mess. Where's the chainsaw now? Sean! Oh, I need a better knife for this unboxing stuff. And then I would need more boxes to justify a better knife, shouldn't I? Okay, so what we go here? Bubble wrap. The box has been pretty damaged. All the corners have been chewed up. Maybe they were a rough piece. I will deal with these later. Let's make them snow. So, what did we get? These are already popped. Oh yeah, I was quite looking forward to these, these handlebars are called um, rabbit, rabbit ears, I don't know, something along those lines, so they are narrow, <laughs> that's gonna be cool as, I liking these. They're uh, very neat. I might as well put them back into the paper so they don't get damaged. Paper is not paper, but um, so I'll do that later. More fluffies. Okay, we got an old tank. This one is um, the one I got, let me open it up. Um, it's a little clip-on on the frame. Um, we have our co open connectors, it's cool. And um, yeah, what I'm gonna do is that, um, because if it's just tightened up with bolts, it's gonna rattle out and come up. So. I am going to maybe use this thing, weld it to the frame and then use a little um, rubber mounting blocks to uh, uh, to put it on so she's slightly isolated. So we have that. Now what's there more to go? We have a bunch of paper. We got a gasket. Oh, oh I know what I bought. This is a uh, front fork seals. Now, where did I put my blunt knife? There's a box in the box. I have never done unboxing videos, it's quite exciting. Oh, <laughs> I know. Oh, I'm quite glad it was in the box. This is my tank. It's a Fresco mount, a narrow sporty tank. So we have a little cap, and it's like a sports to tank, but it's narrower. But with these mounts, it'll just sit on the top of the frame. And we have a little, I'll see if I can get a flush mount. Um, Lid or maybe some, I don't know, something cool. I'll have to have a look into that, what cool we can find. And when I was, um, okay, thank you, go out. And when I was deciding to um, buy the fork tubes, I have decided to go, oh, this is heavy. At the end, I have decided to go eight inch over. So, <laughs> that is gonna be massive. Oh, I was so looking forward to this. Uh, nice. So that's it. It's not, it wasn't much. Um, 
does the tubes, tank, oil tank, handlebars, fork seals and our frame. And uh, that's it. That is our box. And um, next we'll be calling the guy, finding about certifying the frame. And then I will get my ducks in order. I have a friend who is a professional welder. And um, well, I was going, to, that's why I bought the tick and start learning the tick that I will uh, weld the frame myself. And I think I could do a pretty good job, but if I want to get it certified, it's not gonna cut it. I need a professional welder with uh, who can document everything about the welding procedure, including filler rods, gases used, cooling temperatures and whatnot, the whole process, so I can get it down to certifier. And I think they paint it with some kind of magnetic or some kind of paint, and then I use uh, the weird x-ray thing to uh, see if there is any cracks. So uh, we'll go with that. And um, yeah, that's a future thing. I guess in today's episode, we'll try to call the, um, the guy the certifier and hopefully he'll take us on board and um, we'll get us started. Okay, I'm just gonna clean this up, put my stuff away and let's call the guy. I sat my soul down, uh, still excited from the boxes and uh, I have a piece of cake, Slovakian poppy seed cake and Kira made the banana cake. We were doing a little bake-off yesterday <laughs> with our with niece. So anyway, this is the LVVTA, which is Low Volume Vehicle Testing Association. And they have only this list. There is uh, two, four, six, eight, ten people, and some of them are double ups. This is only the certifiers in whole New Zealand. And we have a guy here called Julian. So uh, we're going to give him a ring and see. Um, I'll write some notes down to see what I can do. And uh, they all specialize on different things, motorcycles, uh, trikes, whatever you want to do. So uh, Julian is our guy, so we'll um, give him a ring and uh, fingers crossed we can um, convince him to uh, jump on our project and see the prices and stuff. Anyway, the, um, the postage from the States cost me $600. $300 was the postage and $300 was the New Zealand government taxing me on import. So... Uh, yeah, in New Zealand. All right, let's call the guy. Hi everyone. Um, we're gonna give it another try calling our uh, uh, certifier. So uh, <clears throat> let's get to it. Hi Julian, uh, this is Mario, how are you doing? Good, thanks. Uh, would you have a minute to have a chat? About uh, certifying a frame. Um, I have bought, I am restoring all the Harleys, old iron heads, and uh, I've done two already. This is my third project, but I decided to go with a hardtail version and I bought a uh, weld on hardtail kit. Uh, from the States, from a lowbrow customs, and uh, just arrived yesterday. But um, I was just, I want to make it proper. I don't like to really skirt around things. And uh, so I thought I could give you a ring first to find out what I need to do and how to make it proper. Okay. Um, uh, can you email me a link of the kit? That you of course I can. Yep. Yep. So if you do that firstly. And then we'll, we'll see how it's attached because we're not allowed to do any welding to forgings or castings. And some of the Harley rear ends are forged, so we just have to have a look here to see whether that's going to be acceptable or not. Okay, I have um, so, these guys um, from Lowbrow, they sent me a um, material sheet uh, of uh, what metals has been used and all that stuff. So I can, I can attach it as well. Yeah, so if you could send me all of that stuff that you've got and maybe even a picture of your frame so we can see where we're going. Okay. Um, 
and I I have a you know if the frame checks out I have a I don't know um, if you know George from uh, Phoenix uh, construction in Wellington he's gonna be doing Not really he done dealt with you in before I think so he recommended you oh, okay. and he's a yeah. pro welder I, I, I do weld but uh, I don't want to do any structural work and uh, he does all the he knows how to do all the certifying welding so if the frame checks out he's gonna be doing doing my work too so yeah okay okay, okay I'll send you email now thank you yeah, just, you just put an email you know what it is and you all your contact details and stuff like that too and okay I'll come back to you okay sounds awesome thank okay. you Thanks, bye. Bye. Okay, so here we are. Um, yesterday night I have emailed uh, lowbrow custom guys in the States if they have any uh, documentation to send me with to go with the frame and uh, they sent me a material compliance and oh, it was a certificate of compliance and analysis paper about the materials used in uh, the frame so um, I have uh, attached that to the email to Julian so um, I sent him the link to uh, the paperwork uh, to the frame and the analysis and now we wait um, hopefully uh, we can work with this that um, because he was talking about some cast iron thing and uh, Maybe the um, hardtail won't be a problem because it's quite modern, but maybe the problem we'll have with the Harley frame because the old frames were cast iron. Well, at least uh, I know the 1970 and 1972 bikes I have, they have definitely cast iron frames. They have a big chunks underneath the seat, like the kind of wing portion, which is cast iron. and. Um, um that i keep kept those frames original i haven't touched those for that particular reason that they look too cool to cut up but this is 1979 so the frame looks much younger and maybe they use different steel and uh it looks it's all kind of trellisy different different style to the frame so hopefully um that uh, won't set us back in any particular way oh if you notice the setting, I am not in uh, my garage. This is my tattoo studio. So, um, a different setting, but uh, you're gonna work on the bikes even at real work work. Anyhow, so um, email sent, data sent. This is as far as we get for now. Um, I will uh, patiently uh, wait for the reply from uh, Julian and uh, uh, see how we go. And um, if everything is a go, well, one way or another, now when I have the parts, I can start stripping the bike down. So um, I was waiting for that for a, for a while. I might, I might give the bike another run just to hear her. Uh, maybe go for a blat around the neighborhood, just so um, uh, I have a last memory before she goes to pieces. And then um, we start on that. Oh, another note, I have managed to source and buy a ball vise uh, for engraving so uh, hopefully uh, that's coming so that'll give me more, more maneuverability to engrave parts I know I'm getting fancy now but um, um, if that arrives I'll start practicing engraving bits and bobs Alrighty, uh, that was a bit of an adventure. <laughs> uh, 
engines are not right, are they? Okay, so uh, I will have a different video for the strip down, uh, the way I approach it, and what I'm keeping and what I'm not. Uh, sorry, but the bike is still a roller, engines there, I just clean up all the welding points on top and bottom. We have a hardtail here. And we are going to see my friend George. He is from Phoenix Engineering. He is a, um, a professional hardcore welder. So I don't trust myself. Uh, well, I was gonna weld my frame myself, but since I'm going this uh, fully legal certifying way, uh, I am going to get it done professionally. And uh, hopefully, well, we already started the certifying route, so um, I'll just um, continue. So um, I'll head over to his place and uh, we'll uh, hopefully weld the frame today, which is exciting. So as you could see, that uh, this part was bent from the welding, so we have a, a compressed air push to uh, straighten this part up. And we braced it the other side because it was straight, so we don't really fuck around with most of things, so we're just doing this part. We are pretty much uh, ready to weld. I just drilled the holes um, in the stock frame. So we can weld inside the holes. Um, and yeah, well, he's a pro welder, so he's gonna do that. Um, bit of a mission to line everything up and uh, make it steady, so when it uh, cools down, it doesn't warp. So, but we have it all tied down and everything is sorted. So, um, yeah, when he comes back, um, hopefully we'll just weld it all up and uh, frame will be done then I can uh, go and talk to the certifier whether, well, I'll probably have to take it to him and uh, see what happens. Well, I'm just finding these things out as I go. So, um, yeah, um, let's do welding. So far as the um, certification of the frame is going is that um, after last conversation hopefully I have no chocolate in my face um, after the last conversation with the certifier guy um, we exchanged few emails and uh, he wanted to see um, the progress through um, the framework from the welding how it is done all the processes I wasn't uh, I wasn't uh, perfect, I didn't really take all the photographs through every single step, all the welds, plug holes, uh, how it needs to be done. I had to take the photographs of the sleeves, because we have a tube tube for each frame and inside is a sleeve, which you drill holes to um, create a plug weld, and all of that has to be documented and photographed. Luckily for me, I have been uh, doing little videos, so... Um, I was doing a bunch of screenshots uh, after the fact, so that was okay. I sent all this imagery to uh, Julian and um, the certifier, and um, I haven't heard from him, so I didn't know what's going on. And then I got, I called him yesterday, and he says to me that um, okay, just keep going. I've seen how you have done it. Uh, so the welding processes, George from Phoenix Customs. Um, he's just up the road, so he welded it for me in a proper way. I was observing, so I learned a few things, as it happens. Um, but yeah, we have a frame welded, um, hard tails there. I'm just gonna take the neck out, uh, clean it up, uh, clean up the welds. Uh, I don't need this hole here, so I think I'm gonna... Uh, this is for a tank mount, uh, but my tank has a top mounts so I'm gonna weld these shut um, and clean it all up so you can see them and yeah then uh, we have a frame ready I'm gonna cut all these brackets out they don't need to be there um, yeah uh, I was 
kind of hoping that um, I'll have a, like a better resolution about this certifying, that it's be done, I have some kind of paperwork, say the frame's ready, but um, as it appears, um, um, I don't know, <laughs> I can keep going and I think I'll just keep in touch when everything is painted and so and then he will certify the motorcycle when it's finished. Um, I'm still a bit hazy with the process, so uh, so far uh, he's happy where we're at, uh, he's seen how it's done and um, I don't know, I'll just keep plodding at it, uh, making uh, the chopper go. Uh, at the moment I'm going to find some um, uh, uh, spacers because the rear is wider than, than a wheel so I need to manufacture spacers but since we have a lathe I'm quite happy to uh, do so also um, I am I will be working on my forks I'll do a video about it later I just clean clean them up a bit uh, I need to I bought this um, acetal uh, plastic I'm gonna turn uh, spacers the right length to go inside because I have a um, forks which are 8 inch over so we'll need to put some spacers in on the springs but yeah this will kind of wrap it up the um, unboxing and uh, opening up into the certifying world um, uh, for the frame so um, yeah if you liked it I try to be a bit more well educational but not necessarily educational and just um, it is a new process for me and I'm pretty sure not many people know how it works uh, so, well, I try to document it for the future guys who try to do stuff. Funny thing is that um, you open up your forks and they're made in Japan. Oh, it says big Japan on them, eh? Good old Harley. <laughs> okay, um, this is it, you know, if you guys lasted till now, uh, say good day. Say some hi in comments. Um, if you have your experiences from uh, certifying, you can write it down for me to what to expect. Uh, I wouldn't mind knowing what's what comes along. There were some uh, lovely guys um, who uh, wrote me some links uh, and emailed me some information prior to this just kind of rough process. So um, thank you for that. And um, subscribe, don't do your things. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, see you.